the Joshua trees are dying. This national park is one of only two places in the entire world where these trees can even grow, but what if they can't grow here anymore? Climate change seems set to kill 90% of the Joshua trees by the end of this century. And if something isn't done, the 1.2 million photos of them on Instagram are gonna be nothing more than digital history. So yeah, the future for Joshua trees is pretty somber, but the mood in the national park named after them is anything but, because these trees just sort of make people happy. These are crazy, special, unique creatures that people go crazy for. People are like, where are the Joshua trees? I want to see the Joshua trees. Is that a Joshua tree? Oh my God. Christine loves them so much, she volunteered in the national park during the government shutdown, and she knows this place well. So well, she helped us find the lower elevations where the trees are dying, and the higher elevations they're moving to as the park gets hotter. We're here just inside the northern entrance of the park, and this seems to be one of the places that the Joshua trees are pretty happy. You have a lot of bigger, older trees like this one that look like they're doing really well. And then as you walk around, you'll notice that there are younger, smaller Joshua trees. This one, in particular, this one over here. So go check this one out. This is a little bit of a higher elevation, so it's a little bit cooler here than it is in lower parts of the park. But experts say when you see these young, small trees like that, it's a really good sign the plants are enjoying this area, at least for now. For now, that's the key here because researchers from the University of Wisconsin teamed up with researchers from Cal Berkeley and released this big study a couple months ago. It has a lot of scary statistics, findings, and predictions in it, but one of the biggest is that the average temperatures inside U.S. national parks are climbing twice as fast as temperatures in the rest of the U.S. because, well, national parks are more vulnerable. That's usually the reason the government protected the lands in the first place. And temps accelerating like that is really bad news for Joshua trees, which are really picky about where they'll grow, as I quickly realized. Now we're on the southern end of the park. This is a lower elevation. It gets a lot hotter in the summer. The first thing you probably notice is that there just aren't as many Joshua trees down here. But then you also see things like this, a big old Joshua tree that's dead. And at the base of it, a lot of younger, smaller Joshua trees that also just couldn't survive these warming temperatures. But it's not just the climate in the deserts of the Southwest, it's also the climate in Washington. The political crisis, practically back to square one. Making things tough for Joshua trees. Most recently, the government shut down. Tonight at Joshua Tree, campgrounds are closed. National parks like Joshua Tree went unsupervised for weeks. And the LA Times snapped photos of what it meant for the park. Vandalism, even a very old Joshua Tree chopped down. But before all that, the bad news for Joshua Tree started with this guy and his staff, Ryan Zinke, the first Secretary of the Interior under President Trump. Here's what went down. Under the Trump administration, uh, they ended a policy that was adopted near the end of the Obama administration, which required that national parks make their decisions based upon science. And the Trump administration removed that requirement. What's going to be the impact on our national parks because of that? So it's a significant setback. Um, we spent um, seven, eight years basically preparing that climate strategy and that set of policies. And I think this is the time that we need to take action based on that science. So this is John Jarvis, who was the director of national parks under President Obama. He now works to help our parks from the private sector at UC Berkeley. And he's worried that on its best days, Washington is just ignoring the problem. At the current moment, there is no leadership going on at the federal level. As one scientist asked me, you know, when are you ready to put a, a sprinkler system on the giant sequoias? Because it's not just Joshua trees, it's other species that are dependent on them that will also be directly impacted by climate. Okay, two things here. One, the Department of the Interior has yet to reply to our questions about all this. So two, what should be happening? Well. John says let's talk about assisted migration. It's not a new thing. It's basically helping endangered plants and animals move to areas where they can survive. So yeah, maybe digging up Joshua trees. Can you imagine how popular that would be? The fact that we kind of are at that stage where we're now saying that to protect this, we have to dig it up and move it. It's kind of very sad and disappointing. Um, kind of goes against the whole spirit of it. Exactly. The very reason many national parks were established was to protect the thing they're named after. 
Joshua trees, sequoias, glaciers, all things now in serious trouble. Something is happening to the mighty sequoia. The glacier has lost half its size since then. Is there something that you would say to the people who are running the National Park Service today in terms of climate change and the way that it's affecting our national parks? That they need to step up to their stewardship responsibilities. These parks are set up for future generations. We have the best national park system in the world, and they are currently in charge of it. And so they have a responsibility not to to just current generations, but to future generations. And frankly, at the moment, they are failing in that responsibility. These people I just talked to from Philadelphia have heard about this place, this special place, for years. And they've come here, and they're gobsmacked at what's happening, that they potentially can't come here to see this Joshua Tree National Park that they've been dreaming about for years, to see one of the best night skies in North America, to experience these endangered species which are so special. Please find a way to not crush those dreams. That's a tough thing to hear, right? Well, we're not just going to leave you with a feeling and nothing you can do about it, so here's what you can do, even if you don't live anywhere near Joshua Tree. First, contact your members of Congress. Really, don't underestimate the power of a call or an email, and ask them to protect all of our national parks, not just Joshua Tree. Second, you can volunteer. There are a lot of organizations, like the National Parks Conservation Association, which work directly with our parks and the plants and animals that call them home. Or if you feel inclined, you can donate. The Joshua Tree National Park Association is a separate nonprofit different from the National Park Service that's worked directly with the park for more than 50 years to help them accomplish things that federal dollars just can't. We've got you linked up to all those resources down in the video description and on our website.